Hi, I'm Jordan with Kimray. Today we're going to be repairing a two inch pressure reducing regulator. Before beginning, consult your company's safety guidelines and use the appropriate PPE. We're in a controlled environment, but if you're doing this in line, you need to isolate and depressurize the valve first. Here are the tools you'll need for a two inch regulator. To order the parts you'll need or speak with an expert about this process, contact your local Kimray store or authorized distributor. Before you begin disassembly, use a marker to make a mark on each layer of the valve. This way, when you reassemble the valve, you will be able to line up each piece correctly. Start by removing the adjustment screw and pressure gauge. Remove and discard the washer and packing seal. These will be in your repair kit. Use a 9 16 wrench to loosen the tubing connectors. Take the four main bolts out of the bonnet with a 9 16 wrench. Remove the bonnet from the pilot housing. You may need a screwdriver to pry them apart. Now remove both spring plates and spring. Remove the pilot housing. Use a 9 16 socket wrench to remove the pilot seat and diaphragm. Discard both. They will be in the repair kit. Remove the spacer ring. If you have the old style, replace it with the new design. If you already have the new spacer ring, you can reuse it. Use two channel locks to remove the diaphragm nut from the diaphragm plate. Discard the diaphragm. Next, use a 9 16 socket to remove the lower seat and pilot plug. Use a pick to remove the gasket and spring. All of these pieces may be discarded. Remove all the upper housing bolts. Remove the tubing and then remove the upper housing. Once you've removed the upper housing, discard the diaphragm. Use a flathead screwdriver to pry loose the lower housing. Carefully discard the oil in the lower housing. Remove and discard the gasket and use a putty knife or similar tool to clean the gasket surface on the top of the lower housing. Once you've removed the lower housing, you'll be able to see the removable seat in the body. If you have the Kimray seat removal tool, use it to take out the removable seat. If you're doing this repair in the field and do not have the seat removal tool, only remove the seat if there are signs of corrosion, pitting, or scoring, because you may end up doing more damage to the seat by trying to pry it out. Here's an example of one of the seats that needs to be replaced. The corrosion and pitting would keep the elastomer seat from sealing against the removable seat. The repair kit includes a new gasket, but if you are replacing the movable seat, a new one will need to be ordered separately. Next, inspect the body for rust or debris that might clog your filter when the valve is in service. Use compressed air to clear the sense line communication port. Next, we'll disassemble the lower housing. Put the diaphragm plate of the lower housing into the vise. Use a 9 16 wrench on the lock nut to remove the ratio plug, seat, and seat disc. Discard the lock nut and seat. Keep the ratio plug and seat disc. Remove lower housing, then remove the spring. Examine for scoring or other signs of damage. Using a pick, remove and discard the two Teflon backups and the O-ring from the lower housing. Put the upper housing into a vise and use an adjustable wrench to remove the filter cap. 
Remove and discard the O-ring from the filter cap. Remove filter screens with a pick and clear out any debris in the filter housing. With the valve fully disassembled, now is a good time to organize your workspace and open your Kimray repair kit to prepare for assembly. Clean every part and clear all debris using a wire brush or a rag. If you're in a shop, you can use a parts washer. If you're in the field, you can use degreaser. With the upper housing and the vise, replace the filter screens from the repair kit. This is easiest with the rounded edge of the filters facing down. Put the new O-ring on the cap, then reinstall the cap into the filter body. Put the body back in the vise. If you are replacing the removable seat, place the gasket from your repair kit on your removable seat. Be careful not to apply too much pressure on the gasket while installing so it doesn't tear. Apply grease to the gasket and to the sealing surface in the body. Install the removable seat into the body with the Kimray seat removal tool. Do not over tighten the seat. This also could cause damage to the gasket. Stretch the Teflon backup slightly to make it look like a spring. Insert one end of the backup into the lower housing and use a pick to rotate in a counterclockwise motion until it's fully installed. Next, install the O-ring. Pinch and fold it to make it easier to install into the lower housing. Push the O-ring and the first Teflon backup all the way down to the bottom of the lower housing channel to make room for the last backup. Insert the second backup into the lower housing and rotate counterclockwise. Add grease to the Teflon backups and O-ring. Install the spring around the lip in the lower housing. Next, install the stem into the lower housing. It's best to use a Kimray stem guide to avoid shearing your O-ring. Fully insert the stem into the housing, then remove the stem guide. Put the lower housing into a vise, clamping down on the diaphragm plate. Install the seat disc, new seat, and ratio plug. Use a 9 16th socket to tighten. When tightening the lock nut, it's critical not to over tighten because it can deform the seat. Tighten to the point where the seat disc no longer rotates. Apply grease to the lip of the lower housing. Then install the gasket and apply grease on top. Remove the lower housing and put the valve body into the vise. Put the lower housing assembly into the valve body. As you assemble the valve, follow the markings you made before disassembly. Fill the oil bowl with any kind of light gravity motor oil until the communication hole is covered. Install the main diaphragm and mount the upper housing on the body. Hand start the bolts, reinstall the tubing, then fully tighten the bolts in a star pattern. Insert the spring into the upper housing, large side down. Install the gasket onto the seat. Insert the pilot plug into the seat and hand thread it into the upper housing.
use a 9 16th socket to tighten it down, being careful not to over tighten the seat. If you've done everything correctly, you should feel resistance of the spring as you push down on the pilot plug. Put the diaphragm on the diaphragm plate. Then thread on the diaphragm nut. Use two channel locks to tighten the assembly. Use the spacer ring as a guide for the diaphragm to know when it is tight enough. Install the diaphragm onto the seat. Place the sensing diaphragm on top of the pilot housing. Thread the seat into the upper diaphragm plate through the pilot housing. Use the 9 16th wrench to fully tighten the seat. Make sure the pilot plug and pilot diaphragm are both centered. Install the pilot housing on the upper housing. Add grease to the diaphragm plate without covering the hole. Now install the spacer ring, spring plates, and the spring. Apply grease to the top spring plate. Place the bonnet on the valve and start the bolts by hand. Install the rest of the tubing. And then fully tighten the bonnet bolts. Reinstall the pressure gauge with thread tape. Attach the new washer and packing seal to the adjustment screw and thread it into the bonnet. If you have any questions about the Kimray tools used today, reach out to your local Kimray representative.